Hello everyone, this is Hala Gosan. I'm your co-host for the Miss Texas show. Uh, today we're having a special guest joining us all the way from Cyprus, Elena Giorgio. Elena is the founder at the Global News and she is also a global ambassador of Hope Picks Global. Uh, Elena has a wealth of information. We will be talking about a special topic today. So I'm looking forward to have our conversation with Elena. The Ms. Texas Show is a voice of hope for victims, survivors, advocates, and community leaders against gender-based violence to share their stories and resources. We began showcasing life in Texas. Today, we are impacting lives not only in Texas, but also around the world. Under our segment, Military Time, we run this segment in partnership with the National Veterans Chamber of Commerce. We invite military and veterans who have overcome traumatic events to share their experiences during and after their military service. Under our beauty segment, we invite fellow pageant winners and contestants, artists, musicians, actors, models, and dancers, and last but not least, our survivor leaders from family violence, sex trafficking, sexual assault, stalking, and other traumatic events who are ambassadors for these causes to share their lives and the impact they have made. To become a guest on our show, email us at msusatexas at gmail.com. If you would like to support victims and survivors of gender-based violence, make a tax-deductible donation to Hope Picks Global at www.hopeyxglobal.org. It's Hala Gosen. I'm your co-host for the Miss Texas Show. Today we have a special guest all the way from joining us all the way from Cyprus. Um, if you see this guest, you, oh, you're going to see a big smile on her face. She's always energetic. She's uh, very optimistic and she loves helping people. Today, we're going to be talking to Elena Giorgio, a founder at the Global News. She's a global ambassador at Hope Fix Global, a co-host at the Miss Texas Show, global change maker at World Pulse, social entrepreneur, author, winner, of three awards 2022, first International Book Award, the Humanitarian Award, and Feature Storyteller Award. She holds many degrees, Master's in European Studies, Bachelor in Sociology, a Certified Vocational Trainer, a Certified Life Skills Coach, and a Certified Social Media Manager. I would like to welcome uh, Elena Giorgio to our show today. It's a pleasure to have you, Elena. We have a lot of things to talk about. We're going to talk about a special topic, a very close topic to my heart. But before we start, Elena, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you so much, Hala, for inviting me as a guest today at the Miss Texas Show, not as a co-host. And this is amazing, two co-hosts of the same show together. We're a powerful team at the Miss Texas Show, and I am just letting our viewers know about this. Hello to our viewers. This is Elena Georgiou as a guest today at the Miss Texas Show. So today I will share all the fantastic things I have accomplished and continue discussing childhood trauma and ways to heal as uh, Hala has just told you. It will be appreciated if you do. So I have done many amazing things that make me proud today. And sometimes I can't believe how I found the courage to do all of them. As a policymaker, author, educator, advocate, researcher, and gender-based violence expert. Yet even after decades of abuse and being bullied, traumatized, and mistreated, this didn't stop me from becoming a victor and a hero in the movie of my life. I received a lot of fake promises fake happenings, and fake friends. People abused my kindness, spread rumors that weren't true about me, treated me badly, and took advantage of my kind and caring personality. I have pissed off a lot of people because I am brave, courageous, and confident in my own skin, and some held their breath to see me fail. A lot were and are jealous of me right now, and some have plotted against me stabbed me because my spirit frustrates their demons. But I rise above all this 
because I am a warrior and I fought a lot of battles and emerged victorious towards the light. I have a message for these people today. Don't mess with the warrior because I see you. I was trained to be in battlefields and a winner and I have excellent combat skills to fight anything and emerge victorious. Don't abuse my kindness. I am here to love, create, and heal. I'm not here to hate, compete, or try to walk all over you. This is not my intention. I'm only here to shine bright and be the light for others still in darkness. And some even have stolen my written or spoken words or copied me, and this is called plagiarism. And a few years ago, someone stole even one of my research works, presented it as theirs, and never mentioned the person behind all this hard work. I inspire many people, and I'm aware of this. I am an influencer, but that doesn't mean you're allowed to steal my work, either spoken or written, or my action plans, or my innovative creative ideas that I was blessed to do. Unfortunately, a few weeks ago, I needed to stop working on one of my dearest new projects, Global Council Network, because of all these kinds of incidents on that platform. But I will continue my vision and my mission. Whatever I write, anywhere I speak, either this show or other shows, or shares my stories in a platform that I share, I have all rights reserved because it's my work. Instead of me having a life, I chose years ago to heal and create. I spent many years educating myself in a university and training to be here and share my, my wisdom, my insights, my intelligence and knowledge. I spent years in a university and libraries reading many books, theories and practices and implementing them into my life. If you're inspired, you can state my name, whatever I said, whatever you got inspired by, either by written or spoken words. And as a copyright owner, I use the term all rights reserved and I retain all rights provided by copyright law. And as such, another person cannot reproduce, distribute or adapt any part of my work without my permission. Please ask my permission or state my name in anything you want to put as an addition to your work, either in social media or another form or way. I won't tolerate people abusing my kindness anymore or stealing my work. And justice will be served if this continues. So I will continue now to share the fantastic things I did all these years. I formulated new policies and made improvements to close the gaps in domestic violence law in Cyprus. My proposal included improvements, good practices, complaint procedures, and action plans to reduce abuse. I set up a new university office for 8,000 students. I formulate policies, good practices, complaint procedures, and safety and protection measures to stop sexual harassment and bullying at the university. I educated and empower a lot of people, either one-to-one -one in sessions or throughout my workshops. Participate in speaking opportunities, events, conferences, panel discussions, live podcasts, and awards and prevention programs. I publish two books and many articles and many stories. In addition, I am part of a historical painting that features significant people from all around the world. I'm in that painting because I am a fearless, courageous, inspirational leader who escaped abuse and emerged victorious. You can find me that in this painting, holding my book, which has won the first international book award by Hope Picks Global, with my medallion around my neck. And I'm referring to my book, Live Life to its Fullest and Never Look Back. I dedicate my life story, lessons learned, hopes and dreams, awards, titles, and accomplishments, research and books, and my healing services to future generations as my legacy with a power, powerful message to them to never give up because life is worth living. And I am a living, breathing example of this. I was also a candidate member of the parliament in Cyprus elections 2021. In all my speeches, I spoke about effects of abuse in our lives. 
gave terrific solutions to tangle these issues and presented my two proposals for change if elected as a parliament member. I also discussed the importance of educating and empowering future generations with my new tools and skills to allow them to face challenges and struggles and protect themselves from abuse. I'm, I am an expert in gender-based violence with two academic pieces of research to prove it and proud to say from the University of Cyprus, where I have been an employee there for 24 years. And at 30, this university became the space that gave me new life. The minute I entered this university, I knew that my evolution, transformation, and enlightenment journey had begun, and the life will never be the same again. And today I'm proud to say that I have transformed into an ambassador, change maker, trailblazer, powerhouse, and bridge builder. I walked through the doors of this university as an employee and got beaten up brutally by my ex-husband because I kept it as a secret from him. He eventually found out one day and I was taken to the hospital because he abused me and he ended up in the police station. I wasn't allowed to work, socialize, or have a life I dreamed of. I was a prisoner in my home with my three children. He tried many times to stop me, but I never gave up the fight. And I still work at this university today. Also, this university became the path for me to accomplish my dreams of studying at a university, which I wasn't allowed to do when I was 18 because my parents forced me to marry the first man I was dating, my abuser. I married him because I wanted to escape from my abusive childhood environment. And I said yes, because I thought he would love and cherish me forever. I believe in true love forever story until today. I am hopelessly romantic, even after decades of abuse. And even if I walked alone in life and love conquers all, and I continue to believe in love no matter the struggles I have experienced. I never stop dreaming and I genuinely believe true love exists. And I'm sharing my insights publicly to inspire those who, who lost all hope. So keep your hopes up and it will happen with the right person, time and place. And my dream of studying at the university became possible at age 38. After 20 years, I was beaten up for 20 years and at 40, I divorced, but that wasn't the end of abuse. I finally escaped forever in 2014 after my last abuser, my son. Why I'm doing what I'm doing today? Because I don't want children and youth to suffer as I did. Based on my research findings, violence is learned in an environment that a child grows up experiencing daily. And violence is learned in branches from parent to child and from child to his family. In other words, it's a lineage in the family tree and goes on from generation to generation. It's a generational curse that has been haunting us for many generations. And from the research data that I collected and from a sample of abused women I interviewed, I have found out that child with a child witnessing domestic abuse based on the theory of learning. Children, especially boys who have experienced violence, learn that domestic violence is an excellent way to handle life's problems. And also girls discover the role of being a victim of violence because of the violent episodes they have experienced. In addition, girls may attract or seek violent men. And, you know, before we start talking about this topic, uh, I want to tell you, you are our hero and uh, you have, have done so many things to help others. Uh, you know, your expertise, uh, working at the University of Cyprus, you've done all these policies. Uh, you really uh, hope out there for so many people, for people to come out and talk about all these things. And I commend you for your courage and for getting out and bringing awareness about uh, so many topics. Um, and, you know, you went through a lot, but you came out triumph. You came out with big hope. Uh, you did not let these uh, things put you down. So 
uh, you start talking about, uh, you know, children and the uh, child abuse and the trauma. And this is our topic today. It's a very special topic. It's very close to your heart. It's very close to my heart because these are our children and we need to take care of them. So tell us a little bit about uh, trauma and how does trauma affect us? And then later we can go and uh, talk about how this affects uh, children. Yeah. What, what okay. can you do about it? All right. Um, before I go to trauma, I just want to see say this because it's very important for people to understand about this generational curse. And then I will talk immediately about trauma. Sure. So according to Carl Jung, we carry memories from our ancestors in our our subconscious mind and he believed all human beings are connected with their ancestors through shared experience which he called collective unconscious mm -hmm. so our parents grandparents and even great great grandparents have experienced wounds similar to the ones we have now and as a result we inherited instinctive patterns of behaviors and knowledge and images through process memories and experiences so I was blessed with healing myself from this generational curse and childhood trauma, and I now want to help others heal. And generational curses can be broken. But unfortunately, history repeats itself until you heal the wound based on this generational curse. And I'm here to remind you about this, to guide you, to teach you, to heal you. And um, from the generational curse and child abuse trauma and free you if you decide ever to contact me. So based on my research findings, Hala, and data, I will explain to our viewers first about the ancestral trauma and then about the child trauma because there is a connection between them so they can understand why this is happening to their lives. So this is so as just, uh, just a, an opinion, you know, this is based on a research, based on statistical data that you uh, accumulated with your research. Yes, of course. So it's not just a book I wrote, I read, it's a research that I have done in from an academic institution. So ancestral traumas are unworked legacies of those who have died. And this might include unresolved life stories, secrets, resentments that never had the chance to heal. So healing is releasing inherited wounds and traumas passed down by our ancestors. So we are carrying their wounds. So it's important to know that this is not to blame or disempower parents because ancestral trauma is something they cannot control either. Mm -hmm. So instead of you, you taking the step acknowledge the trauma and change things for the future generation. So if like, if we don't heal now, then we will pass it to our children. So we need right. to heal it now, right? So trauma causes us to disconnect from ourselves and others, and we must return to ourselves and regain control and responsibility for our lives to heal. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to support you if you need to learn how to do this. And the brain can shut off some of our feelings to protect us from pain. And some people feel as though they are disconnected or disassociated from their own bodies following a traumatic experience. Because this disconnecting allows us to escape from pain. We don't want to feel the pain. Yes. So traumatic events can leave influential imprints upon the minds and bodies of those experiencing these events. And when traumatic events occur, the brain wants to protect itself from experiencing the pain of the event, right? So our brains effectively protect us from trauma. However, the protection could create other problems when we do not heal from the past. So when people are disassociating, they disconnect from their surroundings, which can stop the trauma memories. And, low, and lower fear, anxiety, and shame. And this association can happen during the trauma or later, or when we think about this event again. So we choose our partner to, to our unresolved trauma and to be able to face it and heal. And if this pattern continues, you need to resolve whatever it is. And it will continue until you learn the lesson. It's the kind of pattern that reminds us of what happened in the past, 
to convert our unresolved issues or gain control of something we didn't have control over as a child. Mm -hmm. So we need to take control and responsibilities. Now, what's happening now about childhood trauma? Give me a minute because I'm losing my voice. <laughs> Take your time. Okay, thank you. So as a, an example now for childhood trauma, it's let's say you have told yourself that it's all in the past, whatever happened and traumatized you, and you have moved on, right? Isn't that enough? No, it's not enough. When traumatized as a child, it leaves deep inside of you. Yes, right. yes. I know because I have decades of experiences and ex examples to share. And you can even say it settles in your bones. So unfortunately, the memories of child abuse stay unresolved if you don't seek help to heal it. And I'm here to provide this specific kind of healing. And Freud stated that we are compulsive to repeat even if we try not to. That's why you might find yourselves in relationships that remind you of those who traumatize you. However, this will not stop until you acknowledge, accept, forgive, and move on. In other words, heal. And the repeated pattern you might be experiencing today is the pathway for you to remember what happened and heal, forgive, and move on. Maybe your parents were traumatized as children too, and you're carrying their wood. There is definitely such a thing called transgenerational trauma. Their unresolved trauma was passed down from parent to child, from unconscious mind to unconscious mind. So children are very vulnerable. So you picked it up as a child, and as a result, you were affected too. And childhood trauma can leak into your adult life because no matter how hard you've tried to go on, there is still that traumatized child living inside of you. And if you haven't had the right therapy, this child part of you still carries your trauma and it's suffering. Therefore, a safe therapeutic space where you can build trust is essential. And I'm here to provide you this kind of space Unfortunately, unhealed trauma can impact a person, as I said, in adulthood, mm -hmm. and they experience feelings of shame, guilt, feeling disconnected, and unable to relate to others. And they have trouble controlling emotions, anxiety, depression, and anger. And also they may experience difficulties with social interactions, health problems, low self-esteem, lack of direction, and post-traumatic stress, suicide, and self-harm. In addition, they have difficult trusting, uh, fears of being judged, constant attempts to please, and frustration, and many other symptoms. So uh, trauma causes repression, denial, blame, projection, displacement, um, reaction, formulation, in, introje introjection, and Regression. So, <laughs> ways to, to heal the childhood trauma. I mean, you mentioned a few things, you know. Uh, it's not like we can say, yes, I'm going to put it behind me and move on. There are so many ways that we need yeah. to work on to just get rid of this and not let it, not to let it haunt us, you know, later on. Uh, and affect us because. And affect us, exactly. Affect us. So, there are. Um, like trauma, Paula can profoundly affect us in many ways. So in, in, in one of my research, I wrote about passivity and tolerance. And Leonard Walker explains that this situation of female passivity is based on the theory of acquired weaknesses of the women. So this is due to the way they were brought up and the socialization received. So some women tolerate abuse and they, because they grew up in a family, they were downgraded by all members because they were girls. And in this case, violence happens daily in their lives. They think so this is normal. They normalize it, you know. Normal, exactly. They normalize it. And, and I think this is okay. This is okay for them. And women, some women cannot escape this because they don't have 
economic uh, or legal or social yes. Uh, yes. help or service. And others are afraid to leave because they have no safe place to go. And based and other, on- And other things like women, some women in certain culture, they think this is a shame to go talk about their private- uh, There you go, yes. Problems, so exactly. they want to keep it in the family and this, this can get worse on them. You know, they don't want to uh, exactly. take it out, out there and uh, get help with it. So, I mean, there's yes. many factors many many factors and once a woman believes she's weak the perception becomes a reality and she becomes passive obedient and weak yeah. this perception keeps them stuck and unable to escape from abuse i know because i had the perception and it kept me stuck for many years until i freed myself i don't know if you ever heard all of the term trauma bonds and I will explain it's a bond. It's, um, it's a term that we sociologists re- use. And I will explain what it is. So drama bonds are bonds that commonly form as a result of abusive re- relationships. Mm. And the surface level feelings of attachment and intimacy can result from an abusive circle. So in a drama bond, partners think they have true love or connection, even though this relationship is harmful for them so um shared shared pain brings people together so we have a term in sociology that we use and it's called social glue what is this term so trauma behaves like a binding agent in social settings forging connections known as trauma bonds so two pe- two people like coming together because of this trauma bond and this bond connects them. So like uh, I can explain, it's like the, the abuser is seeking for its victim and the victim is seeking its abuser and it mm-hmm. connects. So drama bonds are hard to break because the circle of abuse that causes them floats the victim's brain with dopamine, causing them to develop an addiction to the relationship. And because abusers often make the victim doubtful guilty, ashamed for attempting to break this trauma bond, the victim stays there. And the abuser continues to abuse the victim. So we have two people bonding, connecting through trauma bonds yes. and social glue. Because childhood trauma keeps them unable. As I said before, stuck, not moving. And that's why victims have a hard time escaping. So... I can help victims and survivors in this freeing process because it takes, you know, a lot of, it's not only the courage of the victim, it it needs a specific kind of healing to be able to free themselves. So there there are many ways of healing. Sure. And uh, are there like uh, other steps maybe towards a fulfilling life? Let's go see first uh, how love, um, the ways to heal because I think people will want to know about the healing part and then we can go on on the fulfillment. Okay, so there are seven, seven ways to heal your childhood trauma. It's acknowledge and recognize the trauma for what it is. Re- reclaim control. It's like c- reclaim your power back. Seek support. Don't isolate yourself. I'm here to support you. Take care of your health and learn the true meaning of accepting and let it go. Like accept what it is. I'm I'm being abused and let it go and free yourself. So replace bad habits with good ones and be patient. And people may understand their trauma. They know their trauma, but their feelings need to emerge in treatment and get results. This is why just... Talking and reviewing events with family or friends is not a good idea because they're not right for you, a right way for you to heal. It's the opposite to avoid it or blame your abusers. And this does not seem to help people at every month, you know, because if you don't heal, it will come back and haunt you. Yeah. And just talking about it with friends and family is not the solution. Yeah. So you have to face it. You have to heal. 
So if the trauma is left untreated, one can experience nightmares, insomnia, anxiety, depression, and many other um, panic attacks, anger, and many other things. So um, the about the healing part, I provide healing for childhood trauma and can help you embrace the parts of yourself that you have suppressed or shamed. I also offer a safe space to listen and understand in a non-judgmental way to heal and help you find new ways to heal with emotional issues. Cognitive behavior therapy, shadow integration, meditation to heal your inner child. I provide that. Shadow journaling therapy. I have um, journaling therapy with my seven journals, creation lists, affirmations, vision boards, storytelling therapy, creative writing therapy, and letter writing therapy. And um, I have two books. This will help you. And um, as I said, uh, I, my healing is focused on this childhood trauma and reprogramming your subconscious to gain absolute clarity on what you want. And clarity is power. The more, definitely, and the more thought you put into this, the more detail you lay out. Yeah. And the stronger and more powerful your vision will become. And this creates a subconscious mind map, giving your brain the tools necessary to turn that vision into reality. And subconscious reprogramming that I do starts with deciding what you want now and in the future and focusing on it. Give your brain direction. You can reprogram your subconscious mind by shifting the energy and thoughts you want to attract in your lives. And subconscious program, reprogramming is when you change your subconscious beliefs and habits yeah. to be aligned with your desired life. Absolutely. So, so often what keeps us from living life to the fullest is we need to, you know, reprogram our subconscious and beliefs. So I can help you do that. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you. Very valuable information. Uh, Thank you. Very interesting so, topic to talk about. Actually, I learned a lot yes. today. Not a lot of people. And, 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 and I think the viewers will gain a lot from this. Uh, yes, definitely. So what is your message you, you want to share with our viewers? Uh, of course. Our of course. Can I um, go on? Because I want to give out another thing about the fulfilling life. It's very important. The steps. So the steps towards a fulfilling life is to identify yourself and your purpose and what makes your life. Practice empathy and compassion. Take care of yourself. Self-love. Find meaning at work. Be selective about your relationships. And I mean, let go of the trainers and choose energizers as friends. Never stop learning. Seek help, give generously to others. Practice gratitude and smile and be awesome. That's all you need to know. And um, okay. Um, Have a big smile and and always there's hope out there. And who's better? Always, to, always. Who's, who's better to have this uh, <laughs> smile than you Elena uh, I mean I uh, I really see that you have so many people and your talk and this is not just a personal opinion this is coming from a research from your experience and expertise out there and uh, what you've seen so thank you so much for all this and so it's not only uh the research like the theory it's the practice I implemented yeah. it in my life I worked it you've for seen me. it on the I ground know, and then I'm ready to heal others. And I just want to say that my sessions are designed for people that have hard time expressing themselves. It's very, it's very um, valuable to know that because people cannot open up and our voiceless stuck and traumatized from this trauma. And um, my healing will help you open up the new world of understanding towards yourselves and others mm -hmm. because we don't blame others. We come to heal and find peace and gain confidence, wholeness, authenticity, find our purpose, our passion, and uh, mission in this world. 
And my process is first to heal what it needs to be healed. And then we go on reprogramming your subconscious mind to unlock your greatest self, your greatness. And you can achieve a lot from this. And um, we will work, work together through your shadows to create emotional and spiritual healing. And work together all your emotional pains that, because if you don't stop these pains, then you will not attract the life you want. And All right, Elena, book, tell us a little bit about your book. My book will help you create your new life with the tools I have in there, find your purpose, steps to balance your life, how to give love to yourselves and how to turn your negative situation into positive, to create your new rule book, meet yourself and others in a new light of understanding, and there's a set of creation lists, affirmations, and new ways to let go of the trauma and stop past events. And I also give an explanation about our path, the obstacles we're facing, and what to do about it, and many more exercise tools, new skills. And, and as I already said, to reprogram your mind. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, what a valuable information you provided. And uh, is there a, like a message you would like to give for our viewers before we end our uh, show today? Of course, I will share my message. My message is some days you will have sunshine and laughter and others rain and pain. But there is a lot of great moments in each season and life is worth living. Never give up. Even if you don't have everything you want, be happy with what you have and dreams come true. And I'm a living and breathing example. You just need to believe in yourselves. And if you lose that faith in yourselves, it happens to all of us occasionally. And I'm here to uplift you, provide you with my healing, reprogramming and everything. And I wish all of you to live life to its fullest and never look back knowing that I will always be your cheerleader and power encourager and a person that is always there for you. Thank you very much to our viewers for listening to me. And thank you, Hala, for being so patient with me and letting me share my story. Actually, uh, you know, I want to thank you for, uh, you know, being and be able to join us all the way from Cyprus to uh, tell us about your story, tell us about this valuable information that can help so many people out there, hope is always there. You know, we should not uh, lose hope. We should uh, keep going. And you give us uh, a lot of hope, Elena. Uh, you know, with everything you went through, uh, you came out triumphed. You came out with big hopes. And uh, you, you know, came out with this big smile that uh, you, you're going to be out there helping communities and helping so many people. I want to thank you and hope we will see you again. I would like to, uh, uh, you know, say uh, that we had a wonderful, I had a personally a wonderful time and I learned a lot and hopefully we'll see you uh, again on other shows. Thank you so much. Elena. Thank you. Thank you too, Hala. See you soon. Bye-bye.